Welcome to Connecting with Coincidence with psychiatrist Bernard David Beitman, MD. Dr. Beitman is the founder of The Coincidence Project. The project encourages people like you to tell each other coincidence stories. To learn more about Dr. Beitman's work, put Connecting with Coincidence in your web browser. You'll find his book, his Psychology Today blog, and the interviews from this podcast. And now your host, Bernard Beitman, MD. Welcome to Connecting with Coincidence. I am your host, Dr. Bernie Beitman, MD, and I'm a psychiatrist. And I continue to be perplexed about the relationship between mind, brain, and environment, because that's what coincidences tell us to pay attention to. So I've developed the concept of the psychosphere, our mental atmosphere, the idea being that our minds are immersed in something that's more than just our minds, that we're in something bigger and greater, and that through this psychosphere, we're able to connect with other minds as well as with other places and figure out and know stuff in ways that conventional science doesn't allow us to know. And we may be talking about that some with our guest today. Uh, my book's coming out uh, September 6th. Uh, it's like a podcast season is really hitting where I'm the guest on a bunch of them. And if you want to pre-order it, uh, the link for those of you on YouTube is, is right below. It's called Meaningful Coincidences, How and Why Synchronicity and Serendipity Happen. And my story for today, I was watching the swiftly flowing creek near my house, sculpting one particular rock with its repeated splashing. I looked closely, looked more closely at the rock and I saw two images, one that looked like a camel and one that looked like the Hebrew letter resh, which is an R kind of. The tarot card deck I use is called the Book of Thoth. Thoth is the Egyptian name for Mercury, Odin, and Hermes. In that deck, the camel is associated with the high priestess and Resh is associated with the sun. So the high priestess was riding the sun, or the sun was riding the high priestess. Uh, anyway, it was the divine, divine feminine mixing with the divine masculine. There are symbols all around us. Some of them are a little more difficult to figure out than others, like this one, but maybe not so. So look, see, and try to understand, because these coincidental meanings are around for all of us to see. Our guest today is Nicole Froelich, who is an intuitive life coach who specializes in inner child healing and building intimate connections with self and others. She hosts her own weekly podcast, Enlighten Up, and through her Alchemy Academy, you can find a variety of online courses designed to help you deepen your spiritual connection to heal your inner child and harmonize your masculine and feminine. And maybe it was uh, that those rock symbols I saw have something to do with talking with Nicole today, who harmonizes masculine and feminine energy. Her wisdom comes from, comes from life experiences acquired from walking the pathless path and her gifts are designed to help you establish your internal pathway to answers and solutions you seek while developing and integrating your intuition to give you a more accurate internal GPS system that you can depend on. Internal GPS system that you can depend on. Well, I got one in my car that when I like to get lost every once in a while at night, I don't know where I am. So I got to turn on, where's my, where's home? It's really just <laughs> round around the block. It's kind of fun to do that. What do you mean, Nicole, about the uh, internal GPS? Well, it is a mixture of a few things. Your internal GPS system is how you navigate your path or your life, uh, knowing when to make certain decisions. When you have choices, you have to choose from uh, which one do you choose. And your internal GPS system, when it is in total harmony, can be the most accurate way to guide yourself. So that meaning it is a combination of 
the mind, the heart, and the gut. The mind is based off of our logical experiences that we have accrued over time and help us understand how you know certain situations usually pan out. And we can use that to depend on just from what history seems to tell us in our own life and our own experience. But it's not enough because not every situation is the same and uh, not everything uh, ends up acting out the same way. So then comes your heart, which also is important, uh, knowing that we oftentimes can follow our mind, but we also need to bring the heart into balance, which is our feminine energy. The mind is the masculine. So it's the electric charge and um, the, the heart is uh, the magnetic. And so <clears throat> when you are also in tuned with what your heart really desires, Sometimes we have a tendency to follow what we think we're supposed to do versus what we feel very much in our heart, like what our heart wants us to do. And it doesn't necessarily mean that the heart is always right, but it is important to, to bring that into the mix. And then of course we have our gut, which is our intuition. And our intuition is that sense of knowing without really knowing why. We just know in our gut that this is something that we need to pay attention to, that perhaps something is off, uh, or that even though everything on our map tells us to turn right, our gut's telling us turn left. And we may not even have an ability to make sense of it. It could be that the turning right is a shorter distance, but there might be an accident down there that could happen. And so turning left would save you from being caught in an accident. Uh, and so this is when you integrate all three, this is how you develop your own internal GPS system. Well, that's that uh, your example uh, of the uh, of the potential accident down the if you went right is uh, is related very much to a parapsychological uh, research thing called uh, psi, psi mediated instrumental response, which is a you know fancy way of saying psi, which is like uh, telepathy, clairvoyance, uh, precognition, knowing things without knowing how you know them uh, is included under intuition, yes, but psi is one part of that, can be one part of that. Psi mediated, the psi helps you do something instrumental to make a response to avoid the traffic accident down to the right, as you were talking about. And there's good data to show from laboratory exper experiments that you can know without knowing what you need to do in order to get the result you want. Oh, that's, is there? Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's if, great. If you look, if you look in um, my book, um, the, the new one that's coming out now, uh, and under Rex Stanford, uh, and you'll see that I write about human GPS in there quite a lot. Um, that in the section of explaining how some coincidences happen, I quote some of Rex Stanford's research with psi-mediated instrumental response. The funny thing about that is that the parapsychologist didn't pick it up after Rex Stanford. And so I'm glad that you are using the term and you used a really nice example of it, uh, of going right no, because there's an accident down there. And he's got an example just like that, Nicole. Oh, really? <laughs> in his description. What a coincidence. <laughs> what a coincidence. I said, wait a minute. <laughs> she came up with... Now, now <clears throat> I don't know. If it'd be fun to ask you why you said that one. Was Is that a standard routine of yours? No, it literally that? just came into my head as I was saying it. Okay, well, this is, this is you and me connecting. Because yeah. cause we uh, were talking about this beforehand before we got going and I kind of mentioned it and that is the that story you just told that's so funny one Rex told himself that is so funny because even when you told me you were going to bring this topic up I had never heard of it before I, I, I didn't know that the name that you used and um so so that's really funny I literally everything just kind of came in as I was speaking so I just let it flow and you let it flow over to Rex Stanford and PMI. Yeah. <laughs> That's what you just did. Uh, and he's got more laboratory experiments, but you, this is like a real world thing. So that's what I'm asking you about, um, because I, I will tell one the story that got me going with this. But I want to, I want to hear your stories about how you know whether to go left or right, and you call it intuition, which is right. You don't know why, 
Now, I just had a Psychology Today post about hearing voices. Some people hear a voice to tell them to go left or right. And Nicole, I had just that story uh, a couple of weeks ago where oh, really? I needed to, go, needed to go decide whether I should go left or right. And a voice came in and said, go left. And I said, why? And the voice said, you'll see. And I got to see a singer that I hadn't that I've been wanting to see and hadn't seen yet. And then uh, somebody invited me that I met to have a book party for me here in Charlottesville. So going left was a good thing to listen to the voice to. So there's a lot of different ways. And I think you'll agree with this, that we come up with how to decide which direction to go. And would you tell us a story about how that worked with you? Maybe that Costa Rica story or something like that. Oh, wow. You know, it's so interesting because your intuition is there's a direct cor correlation to your intuition being stronger as your heart opens. Uh, and the more you're in flow and the more you're in your feminine energy, the stronger your intuition is because your intuition is a very um, feminine, oh. energetic uh, uh, phenomenon. It doesn't mean that if you're a man, you don't have intuition because we all have the feminine masculine energies. And this is why they call it women's intuition uh, is because it is a feminine principle that everyone uh, has. So when you, because the mind is, is correlated to the masculine energies, when your heart starts to open, you do actually access more intuition. So when I was 31, I had taken a one year sabbatical off work. I just, I just knew I had to kind of uh, take, I wanted to travel uh, through Costa Rica backpacking by myself for a couple of months. And I wanted to go with the flow. I didn't want to have a plan other than just a couple of things I needed to do just as I got there. So I knew I was arriving safely and had a place to stay the first couple of nights. Um, but other than that, I let everything really free flow. And I've never really done that in my life. I've always been a type A control freak kind of personality where, you know, I know everything that's going on. And this was the first time in my life where I surrendered to this idea of going with the flow and trusting that I was going to be led in the right direction. And so while I was traveling through Costa Rica, at one point I was um, leaving one town and getting ready to go to the next town. And uh, I was traveling alone at this point. I had met some people when I went into the, the, the first town. Uh, so we were traveling together and it was easy to kind of depend on some of them in navigating how to, you know, what ferry to get, what buses to get. But this one, I had no one with me. And the bus system is, I well, one, I don't speak Spanish. I grew up in Canada, so I learned French. <laughs> and I knew a little bit of Italian, so I could understand a little bit of Spanish, but I couldn't, I couldn't really speak enough to really even help myself. And so I was kind of really at the mercy of other people helping me. And I had to just kind of put myself out there and trust and pray that I was going to get on the right bus because I couldn't tell what bus was the one I was supposed to get on. It was going in the right direction. It was taking me to the town I was supposed to be going to. So I started to get a little bit frightened. Um, like when I say frightened, I mean nervous. I was a little nervous and I kind of spoke out to God, the universe, whoever was listening. And I said, I'm really kind of nervous here. I need some help. I don't know which bus to get on. I don't know where I'm going. I really, really need some help. And I kind of walked over to one area where I thought, I thought was the bus I was supposed to get on. And so I'm standing there and this gentleman starts talking to me and he was an expat. So he spoke English and Spanish very well. And so he, um, he says, Oh, do you go, uh, how's your day going? And Oh, I'm like, you know, I'm going well, it's going well. And um, at first I didn't know if I should talk to him because, you know, I'm a woman traveling alone. He's a man. Like I, I you know, I'm trying to be as cautious as possible not get myself into any strange situations but he seemed harmless enough and you know he's like oh where are you going and I told him he goes oh you're on you're going on the right bus this is where I'm going as well I have a home there and I was like oh, okay and so we ended up getting on the bus and we started chatting and he was telling me all about the town that I was going to he's like okay, these are all the places that you definitely want to check out while you're visiting he goes stay away from this area um, if someone comes up and asks you this, don't give them any information. Like he was really good about letting me know all of the ways to protect myself, but also all the ways so that I can have fun and enjoy my stay. And I was so grateful. He just gave me so much information. 
And the whole time we're talking, we're, we're almost at the end of the journey where I know he's going to be getting off the bus um, because his stop is first. And I said to him, I go, you know, we've been talking this whole time and you never told me your name. He goes, oh, he goes, my name is Angel. And I just paused and said, Angel? And he said, yes. And I'm like, that is so apropos. He go, I go, I couldn't have chosen a better name for you helping me out in this situation. And I knew in that moment that he was sent to me to help guide me and, and get me to where I needed to go so that I had the help. So when we talk about this internal GPS system, we have to also be tuned into the fact that we may need help and we have to ask for it. And if we ask the question, the answer will come. Uh, we just have to be a, a recipient enough, open and receiving that answer to know that it's coming in. Now, when the answers do come in, how do you discern if it's the right one or if you think you're just making it up? Because there is a very subtle difference towards where you're you're thinking a thought versus a knowing just comes in. It's very, very subtle. And usually it's the very first thing that comes into your mind is the intuitive um, answer that you're seeking. Uh, and uh, oftentimes you may not understand it, but you just have to go with it. I also have started to tune into some of the subtleties within my body. Um, if I start to get almost like a nervousness in my stomach or just feel something feels a little off in my stomach when the answer comes in, I know it's not the answer that I'm seeking. Um, there's almost like a relaxing energy to the answer. Uh, it also comes in with such speed, you can almost miss it if you don't pay attention. And I remember, I remember even just a few weeks ago, I was, I was driving down the road and I was going to turn right at this light where I always turn right to go home. And I was like, but I feel like I should turn at the light before it and go right early. And I was like, well, that's silly. Why would I do that? <laughs> and so I didn't listen. And of course, because I questioned the intuition that didn't make any sense of why I got the, well, why I got that guidance. And of course, what happened, I got stuck behind a truck that got stuck behind a light and I ended up being five minutes later um, than I needed to be. And so it was just a, a nice little reminder. I got a good chuckle out of it. It's like, okay, it's, it comes in so fast. You can't question it. You just have to go with it. Mm -hmm. So that means you got to watch that little thing floating through your head and, or your heart and then, uh, grab it uh and be able to do it now sometimes it's useful if you're distracted if your rational mind is distracted somehow and so it that becomes a lot becomes a louder um movement for for you when when you don't have to think about it when you can't think about it and that happened with me when i was uh, about eight or nine and i came home from school uh elementary school and i asked my mother where's snapper snapper's my dog and she said, I don't know. I don't know where Snapper is. And so she said, why don't you go to the police station and ask them? Which I, I'm glad your eyebrows raised on that one because I think it was an amazing response. But there are all kinds of reasons why she might have said that. She was a refugee from Germany uh, from the Holocaust about to happen. And um, the police knew everything she knew back then at least she thought that when she was younger so maybe that's why she said that but i thought it was a good way to deflect her responsibility for not watching snapper so i got on my back of my bike and went back to the elementary school and went across the blacktop and across the grass and got to the big road which i'd never crossed before but i knew the police station was over on the other side of the road so i got off my bike and went up parked my bike at below the stairs um, of the police station and climbed up the first set of stairs outside and then another thing and then some more stairs and big door, pushed the door open and uh, big desk, big man behind the desk. And I said, have you seen my dog? And uh, sorry, son, no. Uh, so I started crying. And I'm still, I'm crying now. Uh, I started crying because uh, 
I was a lonely boy and he was my best friend. Oh. Um, so I went back down the stairs and got back on my bike. But instead of going across the big road because I was crying, I just went along the big road because I just was riding. And then I look up. There's a dog coming towards me. He's walking like Snapper. It is Snapper. It was Snapper. He <laughs> jumps up on my leg. Oh. And he says, I think, what took you so long? Yeah. And we go home. Oh. And that's 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 a great example of how it may not make any sense of why someone says something or tells you to do something and they may not even know why they're saying it either. They may be questioning why they even said it. But yep. it's taking you in the right direction. Taking me and because I was crying, I didn't think about going home in the right way. Mm -hmm. And that's what I mean about uh, when the rational mind gets lost, sometimes your intuition, as you are saying, becomes more accessible. Yeah, you're not overthinking things and you're not trying to stick to a routine. Um, yeah, you're well, here's the thing. This is why I talk about the pathless path and why the pathless path has gotten me to where I am today. When we feel lost and we don't know which direction to go, we will usually stumble upon the pathless path. And it'll be a path that doesn't make any sense to us. We don't know where we're going. It won't feel like you're on a path, but it'll eventually take you to exactly where you need to go. And you wouldn't have been able to create that path on your own. It is something that comes from a very divine intelligence greater than our own <laughs> that has created everything around us and inside of us. And when we really surrender to this place of, I just, I just don't know what to do. And you now almost, it's not that you don't care. You're just not trying to do things as you've always done them. And so you're now in the hands of something greater that is taking care of you. Well, one of the ways to increase coincidences is to break out of the usual paths, pathways we are following. Yes. Uh, and, and so I, I recommend that to people or to be alert to co coincidences when stressful events life in life happen and things of their usual structure that you're following is, is opening up. And certainly we have this now worldwide, um, the structure, the structure that we've known is being demolished. And some people are trying to make, keep it the same way that it always was. Um, and others are saying, Hey, you know, this is a big change. And out there in the big change area, there are more coincidences happen. I'm pretty sure. I mean, that's the way it works. You see more of them. So you went to Costa Rica, you took, you broke out of your usual routine, type A, Nicole. I mean, I, I got to look at your last name too. <laughs> you must like the frolic in the world. <laughs> I mean, I, I, names are fun that way. Uh, yeah. Yeah. What, it's, it's, it's funny because I hated it. My name growing up as a kid, cause I got teased so much. <laughs> um, but I now love my last name. When I found out that it means happy in German, uh, I was like, well, this is just perfect. You know, who doesn't want to have happy as part of their name? <laughs> so it really, though, when I think about that trip to Costa Rica, it was the it was the groundbreaking, uh, I guess, chapter book of my life where I finally started to lean into uh, a space that was very foreign to me that would finally allow me to sink and become aligned with the ever divine and ever present energies that are constantly at work with us um, as opposed to against us. And learning to trust, learning to surrender, uh, learning to go with the flow and not needing to have everything so planned out was so crucial to my growth uh, that to to get me to where I am now, and it doesn't mean that I don't plan things now, and it doesn't mean that I don't have certain structures, 
but now I leave room for the flow. I leave, I have a healthy balance of structure and flow. I have a healthy balance of um, action and surrender. And so it's important to know the benefit of having both because like in one of my courses where I talk about harmonizing the masculine and feminine energies, we are in that optimal space uh, when we utilize both the masculine and feminine energies together. They were intended to be used together. One is not more important than the other. Uh, they're, they're, they're necessary to work in harmony. And so it is really just the most beautiful uh, co coherent relationship is when the masculine and feminine are dancing uh, side by side together, hand in hand with one another. And it's, it's beautiful. I, I just can't help uh, going back to that rock I started talking about at the beginning, and I didn't really think about you, you particularly in yeah. talking about it, but it was the masculine and the feminine right there in the rock. And to, to see the water carving these shapes that became at least the way I saw them as masculine and feminine, which is nice intro uh, to Nicole Froelich, who uh, <laughs> is my guest today. I, I mean, Froelich also sounds like frolic, which is very much in the same direction uh, as the German Freerlich with an umlaut probably in, in, the, in your last name. So uh, the, you went from uh, the breaking the structure in, in Costa Rica to, um, to developing um, your alchemy academy. And I, I love the, the term alchemy, which is getting used a lot more than oh, yeah. it used to be. I mean, in a lot of different ways. So it means a bunch of different things to different people. The, the, the basic one was to, was uh, yes, trying to turn lead into gold was really the idea of trying to be, turn your, your, your psyche more spiritually, the lead of your common self into something more spiritual. Uh, and that's gotten out there a lot as a basic uh, alchemy idea. But how else does alchemy inform your academy? Well, it's very much that you know, a lot of my journey has been self-taught. And, uh, you know, I've, I've obviously I've read some books, but for the most part, everything I've learned has been through experience. And I've noticed that when I am allowing myself to get so comfortable with my pain that now I can work with it. Uh, I am able to transmute it into uh, into purpose. And we all hey, man, that, that, that's that's a great line there. Mm -hmm. you, you've used it before. Um, it, that once you become accepting comfortable with your pain, you can transmute it into purpose. Now that's a really cool idea. Yeah, and a lot of us are, I think that's one of the designs of our human journey is to experience certain pains so that we can find our purpose because unfortunately the human race has um, is not motivated to change much unless they're uncomfortable. And we tend to only act upon things when we're so uncomfortable and the pain is so unbearable. And so pain in many ways is one of our greatest allies. We just have a different relationship with it um, growing up that until we start to uh, learn and seek the wisdom of our journey, we can then start to look at pain from through a different lens, which is the teacher of our purpose. And so when we can actually sit with our pain long enough for it to teach us what we need, it needs to teach us and show us what it needs to show us, we can then use it to uh, alchemize, transmute into a purpose that is really calling us. And that's why oftentimes a lot of our hardest decisions that we have to make, uh, or I should say the best decisions we have to make are the hardest ones. And it's the easy ones that don't take us down the path that we really want to go. Uh, and so pain in many ways is our ally we just need to change our relationship with it very much like we have to change our relationship with fear. I often say uh, that, you know, fear is our, can be our lighthouses to our greatest potential. Uh, but we often run away from our fears because I think oftentimes we fear how powerful we actually are and where that might actually take us, which is very far outside of our comfort zone. And uh, I was just mentioning this uh, on one of my TikToks uh, and Instagram reels recently that I feel like our society is very much addicted to comfort 
and we're not addicted. Um, and we're addicted to comfort, which means we're addicted to our trauma. Our trauma is what we know. It doesn't mean we like it. No one likes their trauma, but we know it. It's what we're comfortable with. And because we're addicted to comfort, we're likely um, going to stay with our pain until it's so unbearable <laughs> that we're like, we need something better. And it's not to run away from the pain. It's to lean into it and let it show you what it needs it's to show so, you. It's so cool what you're saying. And you're talking to me right now about me, even though <laughs> we, I think we've been doing this a little bit more than, I, than usually happens with it. But you're talking to me. Um, what, what, I'm starting to get... Um, more and more attention for this book coming out because uh, mm -hmm. there seems to be greater interest than there has been in the past in synchronicity and perhaps serendipity. So I, I've been my I've got to be careful about my ego getting too big because I've had that happen before. So uh, somebody who I thought was going to be a friend of mine because uh, we had just started being friends, it wasn't going any place romantically, but just friends. Um, just after we had a great time, suddenly rejected me. Don't text me anymore, kind of thing. And I'm going like, hmm. well, thank you for that, because that helps deflate my balloon. I mean, it was like, try to be able to use the pain of that uh, to uh, understand uh, and use it. Uh, so I welcome that. But then I talked to Nicole Froelich today, and she tells me about um, how people like to stay in their comfort zone. And what I did was ask her to go to a quarry party south of town. There's a bunch of quarries south of town. Yeah. And one guy's filled them with water. And it's a big playground. It's a wonderful place to go. And she said yes. And then she said later, she said no. And then I asked her to do something else that was just a simple thing. And then she just, just, I was gone. And I don't know what else happened, but we it was my asking her to do stuff. It turned out that was outside of her comfort zone. Mm. And she's used that phrase, comfort zone. She's got to get out of her comfort zone. So I became a major threat to her getting out of her comfort zone. Yeah. And so she had to get rid of me so that I don't threaten her that way. Oh, that's so, you know, that's really interesting because it reminds me of something that I've done. Be and this, ha I think this is very common amongst type A personalities who like to control things and think they know best, <laughs> um, is I realized I had a pattern and I started to realize this around 2014, uh, where I was working on developing a business plan with a business partner. We were going to open up a big wellness cryotherapy center. We were looking for investors and I remember in the beginning, she had all these ideas and I kept rejecting them. And I'm like, no, like, like that, I don't, you know, that's, that's not going to work. Cause my instant reaction was no. And, and this is where this is, this is something, this is another piece of information that's important for people to understand when discerning the guidance that's coming in, because if you're too rigid, you'll miss the opportunities. And at this point, even though I had started like moving more into my flow in this particular instance, I thought like I knew best and it really started to open me up to the fact that I said no to a lot of things <laughs> and I just had my way of, I believe like this is the best way to do it. And I started to think, you know, Nicole, why do you keep saying no? And there was something about it that made me uncomfortable. And I learned to start saying, I, I was like, you know what? Let me say yes to that. I don't know why, but let me just say yes. And I started to say yes. And it actually turned out to be a really good thing. I, I don't necessarily know if it was the right thing for what we wanted to do, but it led us down to another thing. And I started to open my eyes like, you know what? The other way wasn't the best way because it didn't allow for this other option to appear. And so I started to realize that I have a tendency to shut off possibility. And this is part of what I learned in my own mind that my, the reason why I may not have as much abundance in my life uh, of all the things that I desire was because my mind was too limiting in allowing for 
the greater abundance to come in because my mind only believed that it could come in in a certain way. And I wasn't opening it up to all different kinds of possibilities. And so this has been an ongoing journey. And I literally caught myself just the other day, someone asked me to do something. And in my, my first reaction was like, Oh, I don't know if I really want to do that. And, <laughs> and it's actually really beautiful um, request that someone, someone asked me to do with them. And I thought to myself, Nicole, the fact that you just said no so quickly is the reason why you need to say yes. <laughs> Cause I knew that that's my pattern. And so I said, yes. And I'm like, let me stay open. I don't know why I'm, I'm supposed to be doing this, but the fact that I always say no means I'm closing off potential to other possibilities that have, that are so not, that are not even in my awareness yet but they can't come into my awareness until I open the gate and say, okay, I'm ready. Let's try this. And so I'm curious to see because it'll, this, this will be happening tomorrow, I think. Um, but I'm like, you know, I gotta just stay more open and, and be with that. And so I think it's important to recognize, especially if you're that kind of personality where you think, you know, best and you, you know, you like to have control over things. You're that type a, um, where you start to actually, say yes to the things that your immediate response is no. Now, of course, it's hard to discern because there's going to be moments where that no is a true no, but this is more in alignment with where you're just, you just don't feel like doing something different. Okay. It's, it's, a, it's that kind of feeling. That's, and an important, so, that's, a, that's an important thing to be able to recognize in yes. you and in other people. It's just, I've been doing it this way, like this ex-friend of mine, uh, I've been doing it this way. I'm going to stay doing it this way. And this outside thing about going to this quarry party uh, is like just too much. And it was a good thing for me that she said, no, she wouldn't have had a good time. She'd been too weird there. And I asked uh, uh, another another person who wanted to be, I wanted to get to know better. And, and he and I went and had a great time. Yeah. And so it was good for him because he had wanted, he really wanted to go to this. And so her no turned out to be, a good thing for me but it was like for you it's not good for her it's not good for her to stay stuck in this comfort zone and i think nicole it's so good to hear you say and i still want more elaboration about it that americans are stuck in their comfort i i, I remember what came up with are you comfortable with that decision i said what the what is yeah. with, what is with comfortable with that this well <laughs> listen there's a difference between you know, comfort because it's the norm, it's the usual versus feeling safe. And, um, you know, there, there is a, you want to, you don't want to make decisions that completely um, put you in, in harm's, that would put you in harm's way. So you're not safe. And that's why there, this is takes finessing. It takes time to develop because we've been programmed to completely discount this part of our own navigation system. So it takes a little bit of trial and error. It will take a few blunders. Uh, it's okay. I keep, I've said this before in another podcast, just because you are wrong with your own intuition, or maybe you felt like your intuition was wrong, whatever the way you want to interpret it is, doesn't mean that it's bad and that it can't be used any longer. I can't tell you how many decisions I made with my logical mind that were the wrong decisions. Uh, so our intuition is the same way. It's, it's about developing it's it developing, and getting stronger. Yes. Developing because those mistakes will teach you which of the inner exactly. pieces of information you should pay attention to. And you're not mm -hmm. going to be able to make that discernment until you make some mistakes. And this is why it's okay to fail because it's okay to make a mistake because those mistakes become very important teachers. They give you much more information than a success will. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Much more information. So it is good to have a few mistakes and failures along the way because those ones will give you an, an incredible amount of information that you'll now be able to use going forward that a success wouldn't actually give you access to. So, and it's like, you know, when people are constantly your yes people, it's the no people that will actually help you develop the areas that you're weak in. That's so important. So it's yeah. important to keep that in mind. Yeah, I, I, I was denied tenure at the University of Washington. Oh, boo hoo. When I was like, um, oh, nah, nah, nah. so I moved to uh, 
Columbia, Missouri and became chairman of psychiatry at the University of Missouri. And I couldn't have done that uh, in Seattle. I mean, th th that's just one example of, of how bad oh, is, can turn out to be good. But you have to, and I'm, I'm going to guess that you teach people this, you're going to have to look for the opportunities once the bad thing has happened. Because if you go like this, you're not going to see them. If you say, okay, uh, it happened, uh, I'm, uh, I'm going to look around. I hit some guy described me as hitting the ground running when I came to Columbia, Missouri, because I had a research idea that I got from the University of Washington by a, a nice coincidence. And that got me going. So you've got to be able to believe that, yeah, it looks painful, but where you are now, there may be some possibilities. If you don't look, you're not going to see it. I always say that in every problem lies an opportunity, but if you're not willing to see past the problem, you'll never see what's waiting there for you. And every problem is a teacher. And so that means there's always an opportunity to learn and there's always an opportunity to grow. And there could be even wilder and grander opportunities included in that. And I think when we, perception is everything. The lens that we look at through everything will determine our reality. And so the, the goal is, is to recognize the problem, but then put on the lens of opportunity to find out we know what's actually what golden nuggets are waiting for you in all of this. Right. What where is the where is the benefit? Because there always is. You can't have um, you know, we live in this world of polarities and duality that you just can't have one without the other. So it's important to to be open minded enough to to see that and expand, expand the periphery of your vision versus the narrow mind of just so concentrated on the problem. Well, when you're concentrated on the problem, guess what? You're gonna just create more and more problems. And that's all you're going to see. But if you expand your periphery and you start to look outward into the areas of possibility and potential and opportunity, well, now you're allowing yourself to maybe even stumble across that. Well, that's you may, it may not even be visible to you right away, but you could stumble. Oh, across stumble it. is good. I mean, stumble, stumble is good. Uh, oh, oh, look, uh, one of the um, human GPS qualities that I have, become familiar with is being able to get to a place where I need to be to meet somebody that's going to that I need to be able to see uh, give you a, a, a simple example of of a teenager who's made uh, who's who got into her parents car and got her father's gun and went out to a lake um, in the forest near somewhere near her house and was thinking about shooting herself. She was she was about to kill herself. And as she was thinking about that, a car drove up and it was her brother. And she says, what are you doing here? She, he'd never been to this place before. And what are you doing here? And he said, I don't know. I just felt like I needed to come here. And he did. He got to where he needed to be without knowing how he got there. Now, I, I think of that as being able to have two qualities. He could sense the pain of his sister. There's a lot of ability of people who are closely bonded to feel the pain of the other one at a distance. I call that simulpathity, sim simultaneous bad feeling together. Uh, and so he could feel her pain and then somehow his human GPS got him where he needed to be to save her life. Yes. And that's the, the important part of the heart. When the heart is open, the intuition is more easily accessed because your, your gut is a feeling, right? And in order to really feel your heart has to be open. So if your heart isn't open, um, it makes it much harder to access that intuition or at least to trust it for sure, because you're, un you're unfamiliar with the feelings. You're unfamiliar and with driving someplace you've never been before. Yes. What am I doing this for? Yeah. It's a little bit like your left and right thing, but it's a longer thing. Have you had any experiences like this one with the brother and the sister? Oh, that's a pretty extreme example. Um, I'm trying to think. Well, it could be lesser than that, but 
getting to like being in the right place at the right time to meet somebody you needed to meet. Uh, Angel was something like that. Oh yeah. It's, it's, um, oh my gosh. I mean, so many, so many experiences of that nature. Uh, so, okay. I have a really fun one for you. So I was, um, last, last fall, I was uh, on a dating app, you know, I had, um, I decided, oh, okay, I'm going to put myself out there. And I was talking to this one guy and we'd been talking for about a month or two uh, before we ever decided to meet. And one night I was, and he lived about a 45 minute drive from where I lived. And so um, one night my friend and I decided to just do a happy hour much closer to where he lives than where I would, we would normally go. In fact, we'd never been to this area before together, like to go have a happy hour. And I was like, yeah, okay, let's, let's do it. Let's just go there. And so while we're there, I, I got this, I got this kind of, I don't know, feeling reach out to that guy and tell him where you are. Cause you're really close to where he is. I didn't know why, but I was like, just tell him. So I did. And he goes, Oh, he goes, well, why don't you come join me and my friend at this bar for a drink when you're done with your friend? You and were at we the same meet. bar. You were at the same bar. No, it was All a different right. bar, okay. but it was, I was now much closer where it made, it was easy for me to just, just go. And I looked at my friend and I'm like, should I, should I go? Should I do this? And he goes, yeah, just go have fun, go have fun. And, um, I was like, you know what? Yeah. I'm going to just go have fun. I don't know why I'm doing this. I'm just going to go like, why not? And so, because me typical is like, well, you know, sometimes I'm like a little bit of a, 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 you know, I don't know, like just, I feel a little older than I am. Like sometimes I just want to be in bed by nine, you know? <laughs> and yeah, so, but this night I was like, you know what? Yeah, no, I'm going to break my usual routine and I'm, and I'm going to go. So we go to this, I go to this bar. Um, it's like a country bar and uh, we, you know, we start chatting and really nice, really nice guys, both him and his friend. And we're chatting and the guy that I was there to meet, he says to me, do you see that guy sitting at the bar? And this guy was dressed in um, a business suit. So he stuck out like a sore thumb. Uh, no one in this country bar was dressed in a business suit. And I said, yeah, what about him? He goes, I don't know why, but I feel like I need to talk to him. And I said, oh, okay, well, if you feel that, he goes, I don't know why. He goes, I just, I want to go talk to him. And so, well, then you go talk to him and I'm just going to, I'm going to sit here talking to your best friend. So he leaves for about, I don't know, 20 minutes or so. And um, he finally comes back to us and I said, oh, so how's your new friend? He goes, oh, you guys have to meet him. He's super cool. And um, so we go over there and we, you know, we, we start chatting with him. We all pull up seats at the bar and um, this guy buys us all a round of shots and uh, so we're all chatting and he's telling me a little bit about himself. And he was like, oh, Nicole, he goes, what do you do? And I said, oh, um, well, I do intuitive life coaching and I have a spiritual podcast. And he goes, really? He goes, tell me about your podcast. And I said, well, I, um, you know, we discuss all things um, related to the spiritual journey from very mainstream and commercial to very fringe topics. And I go like, I love to cover it all. And he's like, so do you talk about ETs? And I was so taken back by his question because it was not something, anything I would expect to come out of this man's mouth. And I looked at him and I said, are you serious? He goes, yeah. And I said, actually I do. <laughs> so he's like, Ooh, he goes, did you ever listen to George Norrie? And I said, yeah, I listened to George Norrie. And he goes, Oh, I love it. It's so fascinating. And he starts talking about this fascination that he has with ETs. And it's just so bizarre, right? Because I, I just did not expect this man sitting in a business suit to start talking to me about ETs. Extra, extraterrestrials, so, let's call Yes, them. extraterrestrials, okay. uh, aliens. aliens. And uh, so we um, so we start chatting and he's like, Nicole, I really like your energy. He goes, I want to help you expand your podcast. And I said, what? He goes, I want to help you get more listeners. I want to help more people get eyes on what you're talking about. And I said, really goes, I go, what do you do? And he says, Oh, I'm a venture capitalist. And he goes, and I just, I just want to, he goes, I know certain people in the industry and he goes, I can help you out. And I, I just, I really, he goes, I just really like you. And I, and I, I think you're doing great work and I want to help you. And I was like, well, what are the chances that all of this would have happened if I didn't say yes to this person? Like, you know, like it was just the craziest of coincidences that led me there. And now him and I are still in talks and he's already like opened some doors for me. He's, a, he's becoming a good friend. And, um, I'm sure that we're still going to be doing work together, but, um, 
it was just one of those things that you just literally can't make up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And the way I think about that is that your mind can scan your environment in an intuitive way. Yeah. And that somehow you could pick out that the guy at the bar might be somebody important to you. And so you were, and so you had to do a lot of steps to be able to get to be able to talk with him. And it was, it's an intricate dance that you had to do, but you were on a path. Well, actually, I didn't have to do anything. I just had to allow it to all happen. That was the beauty of it. All well, I had to do was say yes. That's well, all I had to do. And, and you had to go. And, I ha and yes. you had to talk. And then you had to agree to go over to talk with this guy. Then you had to talk with him. The, the important thing is that you want that you agreed to talk I mean, a lot of the stuff doesn't happen unless you start talking with somebody if you'd hung back and not said anything to him or even your guy that you know, the, the guy with the dating app yeah that, that he felt the need to talk with this that guy. was the most incredible part of it all i can't just i can't emphasize enough how much he felt called to do it so he was very much a part of this equation that he didn't even realize that he was going to be the connector for us. Um, he just, you know, he's a very big people person. He loves talking to people. Um, and so it was, it was just really wild how it all played out. And speaking of comfort zone, so this is a country bar and I didn't know how to do two-step and all that. Like I've never really done any of that. And he was a great dancer, the guy that I was on a date with. So he's like, come on, let's go to the dance floor. I was like, oh no, it's okay. Like I, I, I'm not very good. And he's like, no, no, come on, come on. And I thought, Nicole, this is the night where you just get out of your comfort zone. Like you just keep saying yes to everything. And so I did. And I ended up having such a good time. He was such an incredible um, lead uh, dancing that I, it was, he made it so easy for me. And so I had such a fun time. I can't, I walked out of that night with the biggest smile on my face that I hadn't had in so many years. Like I just felt it was one of those nights where magic happened and it will go down in history as one of my favorite dates, not because it was anything spectacular, but just because of the synchronicities, the energy, the fun, the me like allowing myself to say yes when I usually would say no. It was all of it was just there, like all the right elements. And I think this is important for anyone to realize, like when it, if you want to let the magic happen, these are like key ingredients. Boy, I, I hope this ex-friend of mine would listen to this, which I doubt, uh, but she needs to hear how you understand comfort zones yeah. really well. I'm really getting that impression. And then you've learned to be able to say yes when there's a certain quality of your no that says no, you say no to the no. And that, that means a positive, and then you go for it. Mm -hmm. So you, you're keeping honing your internal capacities. You have to, to keep honing it. And it's not like I still don't make mistakes. I still make mistakes. It's more information. Thank you. More information. It's more information. Thank you. That's just the, that's just the right way to be able to think about that. The, the idea of alchemy and all this, I mean, how this this date we'll call it um, with destiny, which yeah. is perhaps See, it was a date with destiny. <laughs> it really was a date with destiny. I love that. <laughs> with this date with destiny, how does that fit in with uh, your views of alchemy? That's a great question. Because in order to alchemize anything you have to understand the relationship between mysticism and matter. And matter is simply energy. And so anything can be transformed into a higher expression of itself for lack of a better um, term. And when you allow mystery which is the unknown to meet matter which is solid certainty that is when you are now in the perfect place to perform alchemy and you have to be very open to the possibility that you are as powerful to work with matter and the mystery together to create such big changes and transformations um but it is absolutely possible um 
there are so many instances in my life now where I'm starting to kind of play with this idea concept in just you know we can that we we get we we see this example a lot where like um a glass of water you can write loving words on the glass of water you can say loving things to it and it literally starts to change the molecular structure of the water where it comes into its um, healthiest and most um, supportive uh, uh, state and we see this all the time things come into more alignment there's more geometric sacred ge geometric shapes that will form and so when we can utilize the power of our joy, our love, um, our courage, and uh, some sense of peace, I believe is also important because peace is a frequency that is higher than love and joy. It is just below the um, state of consciousness of enlightenment. And when you're in a state of peace, you are no longer in resistance to anything. And so that peace will allow every, allows you to get out of the way and allows all the magic to happen. So I think alchemy is something that we can all play with in all areas of our life, uh, but it requires a few little ingredients and it, it requires a, a balanced relationship with matter and the mystery. Yeah, that matter and mystery. What's the matter with mystery? Uh... <laughs> that was cute. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. You don't have to credit me for that. <laughs> you use that again. Uh, no, of course I would credit you. I wouldn't take that on as my own. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay. Well, after a while, it'll become your own if you use it often enough. Yeah. It's it's there to be um, used. I think uh, um, uh, the the matter and mystery idea is really very important and related to um, being in the flow. Mm. Because matter is, as you're saying, condensed, condensed and structured, uh, and mystery is uh, the openness. There's a part of the mystery that's chaos too. That's where where things can get too crazy, mm -hmm. and you can lose the flow. So there's a place between the the craziness, the chaos, and the structure that the flow takes place. And you're, that's somehow related to what, the way you're thinking about matter and mystery. I can almost hear that, but I wonder if you talk about that a little bit. Yeah, more. no, I'm glad you said that because this is where the masculine energies are very important. You want to harness that energy. You don't want it to be scattered. And so the masculine energy is what kind of harnesses it and really kind of amps up the power of what you're doing because you want to direct it into a direct, like a sp specific way. You want to direct it in a certain direction. And that is all masculine energy. That is all masculine energy. And so this is why the harmonization of the masculine and feminine are needed for the most ultimate outcome. Uh, you can't, you can't be in disharmony with your own masculine energies where all you want to do is focus on your intuition and going with the flow. Uh, you know, like that's not you utilizing your masculine energies. Well, now like you could find yourself in situations where it gets really chaotic and everything's really scattered and um, you're not actually utilizing your energy in the best way. I say the masculine is always the container for the feminine energy and it allows the feminine energy to do her work in the most, um, uh, what's, what's the word I'm looking for most powerful way, because if it's scattered now it's going in all different directions, but when it's harnessed and it's in a container and it's given a specific direction to go now it can be funneled and channeled in the most optimal way. And so it's important to be able to harness and know the, the importance between the masculine, which would be the matter and the feminine, which would be the mystery. Okay, um, I, I, I'm. We're getting near having to stop in a bit, and you just bring me back to the story I was talking about at the beginning once again with um, the high priest. Not a sentence. coincidence that you brought that story on today. <laughs> what do you make out of my bringing that up there here today, Nicole? I think it brought in the energy that we needed to have this discussion. Hmm. It set the tone. Because the tone is one of your major ideas for people, emotionally 
ideas. I mean, you're very passionate about helping the masculine and the feminine uh, come together. Uh, and you see in yourself, you have a, what a highly structured, you come from overly structured, it looks like. And you ha have been working on trying to get your intuition, your heart, your feminine part more activated to get a blend of the two. I think that's that's what you're teaching other people as well, because yeah. that's what you're learning for yourself. Yeah. Well, they say, if you want to learn anything, become the teacher. <laughs> oh, that's true. And I, I, my version of that is I'm a psychotherapist. And the only way to be in therapy without being the patient is to do psychotherapy, mm -hmm. is to be the therapist. Yeah. It's, it's the same. I, I'm a teacher looking for a student so I can learn something. I mean, that's exactly, that, exactly. That's the way that, that's it's the polarities that you and I are familiar with in this world um, are what we bounce around with. Uh, it's this is a polar place, this earth, and uh, we just got to we got to deal with them. And one of my favorite ideas um, is um, everything contains its opposite. Uh, because you've mentioned that uh, every problem has a solution, solution. or is, and there's a way out of it. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, I, I ask, uh, what is the opposite of everything contains its opposite? Everything and nothing. Everything and nothing. Yeah. Uh, and there are other answers I've gotten to that. It's kind of a fun Twizzler uh, yeah. to get people to think about. But we can we can end uh, our, our discussion with this, but uh, you've talked about some personal things, but I like to ask at the end sometimes for some personal thing about Nicole that you may, we may not have talked about, which you'd like to have other people know. This particular year is a lot about pushing yourself extremely far out of your comfort zone that requires you to face a fear you've been avoiding. And there's just no ways around it. Our entire world is going through this. I'm seeing it within a lot of my community, everyone I talk to, it just seems like there's some sort of almost catastrophic or impending catastrophic disaster that could be coming down the pipeline that is there to almost divert you away from the, from like catastrophe. But in order to do that, you finally got to face a fear that you've been avoiding and it will take you to a level that you have been wanting to get to, but you didn't realize that fear was holding the ladder for you. And so this year I have finally faced um, a, a personal fear of mine that I have been putting off because uh, I was just so scared. I didn't know what the outcome was going to be. I was so scared the outcome would be awful. And uh, which is why I avoided it for so long, but I faced it and I started facing it back in May. And as a result, it's opened up so many doorways and it's brought in so many opportunities that I didn't know were possible. And of course the outcome was nowhere near as bad as I thought it was going to be. And, uh, and in fact, so many blessings have come out of it on top of that, that I'm like, Oh my gosh, if I had known this was going to be the outcome, I would have done this way sooner. But of course, uh, we don't get to know that information ahead of time. And so I think what's important this year is that everyone take stock of what is the thing they've been avoiding because fear, the fear of facing it is so deep and it's time to face that fear, allow fear to hand you the ladder that you've been seeking so that you can actually get to the next level um, or even get you out of the hole that you might be in, okay, and get you to the surface so that you can start working on the things that your soul is destined to be working on in this lifetime. Uh, we live in a universe of free will. And so we have to remember that just because we're destined to do something doesn't mean we will. Uh, we can completely derail ourselves and make choices that will continuously take us on detours, which again, is still all very much part of the journey. It's what we're choosing to learn, but we may not actually achieve what it is that we came in here to achieve. And so this year, I feel that it's an important year uh, coming off the heels of what we've all been through globally uh, in the last two years of not really truly feeling safe, uh, not really knowing what's happening and facing a lot of uncertainty is now it's time to go for it. Now it's time to face the uncertainty, to face the fears, to do the thing that you've been avoiding for so long and make some big changes and change is the name of the game. And 
It's about getting out of that comfort zone. The only way we grow is when we get outside the comfort zone. We know this, but really what we don't realize is that the comfort zone is, is extremely small and outside the comfort zone is where all the jewels and the gems that we are in search of in our lifetime are waiting for us. And so it's time to go do a little digging or at least stumbling in areas that we're not even used to being in. You, you don't even need a path. Just allow yourself to stumble, fumble, crawl. doesn't matter. Just allow yourself to be there and step outside your comfort zone. Good message for this ex-friend of mine and even more importantly for uh, humanity. Because humanity is now terrified of what it's doing to itself, which is uh, slowly boiling ourselves like a frog in the in the hot water, slowly being heated up, kind of don't notice it, but know it's happening. We know there's impending doom that we are creating. It's yeah. in a lot of different ways. And the global warming is one of them, but there are other ones too. And we need to face our fear of what we are doing as as humanity and you're making that yet very cl more clear uh as we end this so i thank you very much for uh for being with me today nicole it was it was a pleasure talking with you oh the pleasure was all mine maria so glad to be here with you today thank you for inviting me you're welcome this cycle's fear is a mental atmosphere Cosmic consciousness